This is Bengaluru, capital of Karnataka. It is also known as the Garden City, the Cosmopolitan City and the IT capital of India. Bengaluru, the fastest growing city of India, has a long history dating back to the 9th century. However, a popular story relating to the history of Bengaluru goes back to the 12th century when most of today's Karnataka was being ruled by the King Veera Ballala of the Hoysala dynasty. The story goes that Veera Ballala once lost his way in the forest. Hungry and tired, he met an old woman in a lonely hut. When he asked for food, the woman offered him Bendakalu, which means boiled beans. Soon, the place came to be known as Bendadakaluru. Over a period of time, it came to be known as Bengaluru in Kannada and as Bangalore in its anglicized version. Uh, Bangalore has got a great tradition of history. The cantonment is very much clubbed with the English background. When I say English, the British presence in Bangalore. Now you'll find among the statues of Bangalore, this is a very much European tradition of having statues. Not to say it's not only European, you also have in the East as well. The rulers and all those who shape Bengaluru have their presence in the city in the form of innumerable landmarks and statues. Many of Bangalore's roads, intersections and gardens have the ever-presence of the statues of kings and queens, national leaders, politicians, statesmen and architects of the state. The founder of this beautiful city was Hiriya Kerempe Gauda I of the Vijayanagara Kingdom. His statue is located in the centre of the city in front of the corporation building. The then governor of Madras, Jai Cham Rajendra Warrior, unveiled the statue in 1964. Kempe Gauda was the one who shifted his capital from Yalahanka to Bengaluru. It is believed that when he was relaxing under a tree, he conceived the idea of building a suitable city which would be his future capital. He built forts, a cantonment, water reservoirs and temples for people of all trades and professions to live in and be self-sufficient. One of the successors of Hiriya Kempe Gauda was Kempe Gauda II, who built four such towers in the four corners of the city to mark the boundaries of the capital. But today, Bengaluru has grown beyond those boundaries. The towers exist even today, and they are located at Makri Circle in the north, near Alsu Tank in the east, Kempambudi Tank in the west, and inside Lalbag Botanical Gardens in the south. The tower has Lord Shiva carved in the south direction, Ganesha in the east, Kartikeya in the north and Vishnu in the west. This tower was said to be mounted on a rock with water around it. Kempe Gauda too was associated with the building of many tanks like the Alsu tank. He made Magadi his new capital and he came to be known as Magadi Kempe Gauda. This is Kaban Park. It has been named after Sir Mark Cabin. His statue is situated in front of the Karnataka High Court. Sir Cabin was a British Army officer with the East India Company who became the Commissioner for Kurd and Mysore State in 1834. It is said that he helped reform the finances and create a peaceful and prosperous state. Kabban Park is home to four statues, Queen Victoria, King Edward, Sri Sheshadri Ayer and Chamaraja Warrior. At the entrance of Kabban Park is the statue of Queen Victoria, the monarch of Great Britain and Ireland. She is also known as the Empress of India. Following her demise in 1901, this statue was erected in 1906. Uh, a critique of the history of our colonial past will help us better appreciate our own national feelings and national identity. Uh, the statue in no way will remind us that we are still slaves. 
or not necessary because a statue can remind us of history of culture of art and architecture of and so many varieties of things If you visit the Central Library in Kaban Park, you will never miss the statue of Sri Sheshadri Iyer, which was unveiled in 1913. Sheshadri Iyer was Diwan of Mysore from 1883 to 1901, and he is also regarded by a few as the maker of modern Bengaluru. He established the Kolar gold fields and the Victoria Hospital, and commissioned the Shivana Samudra hydroelectric project and the well-known Lal Bagh. He was also involved in the founding of the Indian Institute of Science, one of the premier research institutions in the country. Not too far from the statue of Sri Sheshadri Iyer is the statue of Sri Chamarajendra Warrier, the 23rd Maharaja of Mysore. His statue is located near the tennis pavilion and was unveiled in 1927. In his brief reign, Chamaraja Warrier left an indelible mark in Indian history by instituting the Representative Assembly of Mysore State in 1881. He founded the Agricultural Bank to finance farmers and set up industries and educational institutions. Many of the famous landmarks of Bangalore owe their existence to him, including the Bangalore Palace and the Glass House at Lal Bagh. September 15th is celebrated as Engineers Day in memory of one of the greatest engineer statesmen Sir M Vishweshwaraiya. He served as Diwan of Mysore from 1912 to 1919. This statue of his located in KR Circle was unveiled by the then president of India VV Giri in 1970. He designed a flood protection system for the city of Hyderabad. Vishweshwaraya supervised the construction of the KRS dam across the Kaveri river. The dam was the biggest reservoir in Asia when it was built. Besides setting up many industries, he played a lead role in the establishment of the State Bank of Mysore in 1913 and the University of Mysore in 1916. Sir M Vishweshwaraya was conferred with Bharat Ratna in 1955. Going back in time, imagine an army marching up for an attack. Lord Cornwallis is said to have led his army through MG Road in the early 1780s. Mahatma Gandhi, the father of the nation, has been immortalized in the minds of every Bangalorean through this statue in the Mahatma Gandhi Park on MG Road. Mahatma Gandhi's statue was unveiled in 1955. Fondly called as Bapu, Mahatma Gandhi was an apostle of peace. He lived a simple life. preached non-violence and demonstrated its power to the entire world. Today, this is a place for people to raise their voice through non-violent protests and strikes. We're now standing in one of the central locations of the city which has a lot of important buildings. Behind me is the central one of Bangalore shopping malls and that is the Mayor Hall where general legal matters are taken care of. Though a lot of people frequent these places, not many are aware of the presence of the statue here or its history. Come, let's go take a look. This is the statue of Reverend Ferdinand Kittel, a German priest with Basel Mission in Karnataka. Kittel is known for his contributions to Kannada culture and literature. An eminent lexicologist, he worked for over two decades in compiling the first ever Kannada English dictionary. Published in 1894, the dictionary is a compendium of about 70,000 words. Though he is almost forgotten back in Germany, he is widely recognized in Karnataka. He is credited with shaping the Kannada language and the regional identity of the Kannada speakers. Here is a statue of poet Tiruvalluvar. As part of the interstate diplomacy, The Karnataka government has placed a statue of poet Tiruvalluvar here while the Tamil Nadu government has placed a statue of poet Sarvagnya. This statue near Alsu Lake stands as a witness to the new and cordial relationship between the two states.
His greatest work is Tirukkural. Kural is considered as common creed. He gave more importance to righteous living in public life. Over the years, poet Tiruvalluvar's work has been translated into many other languages. Statues uh, is needed because uh, unless and until uh, the, the, the prominent people statues are uh, installed and what you see today, uh, people uh, will not recognize, uh, they will forget the history. That is very important. The statues should be there. And that too, not too many. The uh, prominent uh, who are freedom fighters and all those such people, the statues should be there in uh, the, all the prominent places. History is not the story of the dead past. History is the story of our uh, ancestors and their experience. And if I have an experience today in the present, I suppose my experience tells me much for my future. So I suppose from that point of view, the experience of our yesteryears has got some bearing today. So if that's I say, if I say why the city is like this, why it's got those names, why we have these avenues, then I suppose a little bit of a knowledge of history comes to our rescue and I think it is worthwhile. We have taken you on a little journey that forms an important part of Bengaluru's history. Today, these statues are more of a landmark with no personal relevance to the majority, barring a few. Though the statues of great men around the city may not increase, let's hope that those that exist will continue to do so and not become history. Bengaluru has been witness to many ruling dynasties, colonization and some historical events. With the course of time, these events and achievements by some leaders has been immortalized and commemorated in the form of statues. Going back in time, imagine an army marching up for an attack. We're now standing in one of the central locations of the city, which has a lot of important buildings. Behind me is the central, one of Bangalore's shopping malls, and that is the town hall. Well, sent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is okay. Pose. <laughs> this is like so casual. Okay. Okay. How was I to know? But today uh, we need to change that constitution according to the present uh, uh, way of uh, our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, what you call politics and all that and the thing. And uh, going by the, the Nehru, uh, he has struggled a lot. Uh, uh, Personality-wise, uh, today he is a father of a nation, recognized by everybody. And the present generation, the younger generation, uh, should uh, have not read much about it. Oh God, like, I'm being so conscious here. <laughs> this is Bengaluru.